Let's take a look at that AAA process with the EAP login in a little bit more detail. Um, so just to make sure I've officially stated it, uh, AAA stands for authentication. Who are you? Authorization. Well, now that we know who you are, we know what you're allowed to do. And this is basically going to get you into the network. Once you're into the network, we'd like to have records or logs of what you've done. That's accounting, simply the logs. So AAA, authentication, authorization, and accounting. AAA server could be Active Directory, could be Free Radius. It could be, if you want to get the most out of your Cisco equipment, the Identity Services Engine. So the Cisco ICE authentication service provides access to a username and password database and that actually lives in ICE. Alternatively, you could put ICE in between uh, the device and AD. So for example, here you've got the client, the client authenticates to the switch. Let's say the switch sends the credentials to ICE. ICE can talk to multiple AAA servers on the back end, or you could use its internal local user database. Now, if you already have an Active Directory domain, typically makes the most sense to point ICE or connect ICE into AD. You'll actually see it listed under users and computers. Um, ICE will become part of your Active Directory domain, but then it can forward these requests to the domain controller. The results come back. And a lot of times what we can learn are what members uh, or what users are members of particular groups. And then all of our policies really get built in ICE. And I say, for anybody that's a member of this group, let them do this thing, you know? So ties in nice and clean with Active Directory, allows us to establish network policies, which make a whole lot of sense. And then these policies are all gonna be returned as what? As AV pairs. So again, your authentication request comes in, you know, here's my username, here's my password and we validate it and we go, okay, if you check out, then here is what your access session is gonna look like. And these AV pairs really wind up defining Auth Z or authorization. So the Cisco ICE authorization service provides uh, identity-based application of policy. So we're setting up rules or policies for what you're allowed to do based on who you are and time of day. And we can consider things like security posture. You know, are you patched and up to date? Um, all this we can come in, you know, kind of bring into consideration before we decide what access list you get applied, uh, what VLAN we assign you to, or if we're going to leverage security group tags for TrustSec. Um, Cisco's ICE accounting service gives us records of what's happened, who connected, how long were they logged in, how many you know, bytes did they download, things like that. So this is what the login process typically looks like. Uh, we've got a user on the left-hand side. They're going to kick things off here with an EAP on LAN or EAP over LAN start frame. So he goes, hey, I'd like to log into the network. Switch replies, and he goes, fantastic, who are you? User says, I'm user A. OK, well, we take the credentials for user A. I don't know about user A, but let's pass it back to Cisco ICE and see if they do. Pass these credentials back to ICE, does a uh, check within the local database, database confirms the ID and grants access. So a lot of times we don't just instantly grant access, we go, okay, you're allowed in and here are the details of that. So our results come back and we say yes, access granted, and here's those AV pairs, attribute value pairs. VLAN 99, downloadable access list 101, um, MACSEC policy must secure, things like that. 